Hi everyone, this is Elan from Skin Chakra and today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most annoying ingredients for non-chemists in the cosmetic formulations and that's about chelators. Chelators are very common in cosmetic formulations and even in home care formulations but if you are not a chemist and have never worked a complexometric titration uh, you are somehow confused or cannot really grasp what they do in the formulation. The word chelate comes from the Greek and it means uh, pincers or crab claws and that is exactly how you can imagine a chelator with these claws. Basically, chelators are molecules with multiple functional SH or OH group and these build these groups build the claws of this crab and the crab with these SH or OH groups hovers over metal ions and binds them and we we'll come to that what it does with them but basically imagine in your mind and you will see later in the video that the chelator hovers over the metal ion and binds it between its claws. EDTA and phytic acid are the most common chelators in cosmetic care at the moment and you have certainly heard of them or even worked with them. EDTA has up to four clouds depending on the uh, salt that is used and these are these uh, functional groups and phytic acid has six pairs of clouds that you can see here. These are these OH groups. Now what do they do? They have the ability to bind multivalent metal ions in their clouds and form a non-toxic, inert and water-soluble complex. This is very important for the definition and function of the chelator. There are other molecules that can bind metal ions, but they do not build a non-toxic water soluble or inert complex. This is the pre-requirement for a, a molecule to be considered as a chelator. That the product that is made is, is non-toxic, is inert, so it doesn't change anymore, and it's water soluble. Why we use them? Imagine chromium ion in your mind. Chromium ion builds amazingly beautiful salts, but it's extremely toxic to the environment and toxic to, uh, for our bodies. So the crab or the chelator hovers over this molecule. This is EDTA as an example that hovers over chromium ion and binds it between its clouds and makes a water-soluble complex that, uh, that it is easily handled in. Chelators uh, are uh, used basically in pharmacy, medicine, environmental cleaning, personal care, home care, and even other, other industries such as ink and paint and almost wherever you are working with water. If you are um, somehow active in healthcare, you have perhaps heard of or read about a chelating therapy that is used to detox the body and the organs and uh, um, is used to remove the uh, metal ions from the organs after certain uh, injuries, medications or, uh, or toxic reactions. Metal ions such as iron, copper, cadmium, arsenic, chromium, nickel, uh, mercury and lead and a, a few couple that I haven't mentioned here are um, overall in the nature, soil, uh, surface water, uh, sea water, and they um, cause lot of unwanted reactions in our organisms. Uh, that is like uh, deactivating uh, biological enzymes. They can catalyze formation of RAS, reactive oxygen uh, species that is uh, 
responsible for all of the oxidative stress in our bodies and the aging caused by the oxidative stress neuropathy degenerative diseases or meddling with the function of liver and kidney and other organs so chelators are not do not come necessarily from the laboratory although they are all made in the laboratory as well but they are abundant in nature specifically phytic acid citric acid and kojic acid are available in nature this is a molecule of phytic acid phytic acid specifically is very abundant in uh, seeds and grains and nuts it is responsible for the biosynthesis of several cell wall polysaccharides and plant growth regulators so they have a function in the plant kingdom and um, although it is very useful for the plant or grain or, or seed this is what we call anti-nutrient when it comes to our consumption of the food and this is the reason why we soak seeds and nuts and grains or sprout them before using because uh, the phytic acid is washed away and so the nutrients are and the minerals are uh, 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 more bioavailable to our bodies in skin care we use chelators mainly because of two uh, advantages one is for the sake of the formulation the other one is for the sake of the skin in in, in formulations they are used as an antioxidant to enhance the color and scent stability and to boost the preservative efficacy metal ions cause a lot of uh, mischief in formulations they accelerate the oxidation they cause color change or can even cause a change of the scent over time because of the oxidation process and uh, they are a part of microorganism cells so uh, they they are something that that stresses the preservative by removing them or binding them we are uh, helping the formulation for a longer oxidative stability for color and scent stability and for a better preservation look at the oil rancidity pathways for example oils are usually become rancid by any of these three and normally by a combination of these uh, three pathways microbial rancidity caused by microorganisms are obviously hydrolytic rancidity and oxidative rancidity by microbial uh, rancidity when you bind the metal ions then you are deactivating the microorganisms and you are enhancing the stability of the oil as well for the oxidative uh, rancidity uh, one of the catalyzers are metal ions trace metals and free radicals so by using a chelator that binds the metal ions and works as a as an antioxidant as well and scavenger of the free radicals you are enhancing the stability of your oils and uh, slowing down the process of oxidation rancidity in skin care that is something that is less known and less focused on but exactly in skincare or for the sake of skin the uh, chelators are used to bind the metal ions that cause the uh, oxidation and by binding iron and other metal ions such as copper that are uh, responsible for the uh, photo photo oxidation uh, they uh, improve the skin condition and slow down the process of photo aging or enhance the uh, efficacy of the um, sun protection factor none of the chelators 
or has a sun protection factor on its own and none of them can be used as a SPF but they are all useful as a SPF booster or enhance the efficacy of the SPF and they bind the metal ions that are responsible for all of the oxidative stress on our skin as well. The chelators that are most widely used in personal care are EDTA and its sodium salts, phytic acid and its sodium salts, citric acid and sodium citrate, uh, cortic acid, salicylic acid, hydroxamic acid and its salts, and gluconic acid and its sodium salt. EDTA is very widely and stubbornly used in the conventional cosmetics. It is not a natural product. It is laboratory made synthetic. And apart from its being synthetic, it is not really environmentally biodegradable. So it has environmental impacts, but it is still allowed in all parts of the world and it is stubbornly used by conventional uh, products every home care product uh, dishwashing liquid or or laundry liquid or even uh, personal care products when they are conventional shampoo shower gel hair gel whatever uh, look at the label uh, of the products in a drugstore or in a um, supermarket and you will find edta on the uh, label we don't use it in natural formulations. In natural formulations, usually phytic acid and its sodium salt are used, hydroxamic acid or gluconic acid. Citric acid is mainly used for pH adjustment and chelating is the byproduct of it. I haven't seen it used only for the sake of um, chelating but it is a byproduct of using it and it is mainly used as a preservative in um, plant extracts and hydrosols because it one reduces the pH and two binds the metal ions so it acts as a preservative in those products because of these two functions. Kochic acid and salicylic acids are chelators but they are not used in cosmetic as, as chelators they are used for other functions and for other properties but chelating is a byproduct as well phytic acid and sodium phytate are now most widely used in natural formulations because they are pl plant derived and uh, they are easily available they have a much higher price compared to edta or citric acid but uh, it is very effective. Basically, you use the chelators at a very low concentration. So the price in the finished product will not be a huge um, factor, but it is still something that you need to consider before you design your formulation. When we used chelators, it's everywhere when you have water containing or water miscible formulations. These contain toners, micellar water, shower gel, shampoo, hair conditioner, aftershave, scented bars, shampoo conditioner bars, even conventional soap, lye soap bars, or emulsions. Whenever you have water in the formulation, you are using chelators for all of the reasons that I have already mentioned. The one exception that we do not use any chelator. Keep that in your mind, write it down, put it on your uh, computer, whatever. Water in oil emulsions do not need any chelator. In water in oil emulsions, we usually apply a salt in the simplest case, sodium chloride, but if you want to be more sophisticated or more efficient, we use magnesium chloride or magnesium sulfate in the formulation to stabilize the formulation. So if you add a chelator to your formulation, you are binding those metal ions and you are deactivating those metal ions 
and you are accelerating the physical instability of the product. So this is the only, only case when you have water in the formulation, but you don't use any chelator in the formulation. I hope it is clear for you. If not, write it down, make it your mantra. Water and oil emulsions do not need any chelators. So now I am curious to know which one of these chelators you are using already in your formulation, citric acid, phytic acid, hydroxamic acid, gluconic acid, or any other chelators that you are using, write down in the comments if you like to share your experience and mention which one you are using and to compensate you for your patience and bearing with me for this long presentation before we go to the video i am giving you a special offer and that six month subscription in our members only portal for an attractive price use this uh, link uh, to order the subscription only through this link you will land on the special offer otherwise you will see the usual list price that is 159.99 but for your patients we are giving you this six month subscription for 129.99 so i hope you have learned something from this presentation and stay for the video that I show you exactly how it can. Now that you have watched the presentation, I'm going to show you how the chelator works really in action. Here I have distilled water. Here again is distilled water. I'm going to add something to that. And this one is tap water. Obviously, distilled water doesn't contain any metal ions and tap water contains calcium and magnesium ions. And here I have a, a special indicator that is indicator for calcium magnesium ions. It, call, it is called aerochrome black tea. And when I add a few drops of it, to these water samples, I think I need more. Okay. You see, I hope you can see it against the white. Better. Okay. These two are distilled waters without any calcium magnesium ions, and this one is tap water with calcium and magnesium ions and you see the difference these are blue and this one is purple so when we have a, a purple color it is an indicator that we have calcium and magnesium ions in the water and now i'm going to deliberately add some magnesium chloride to the distilled water and you see that the color will change Hopefully, yeah. So, distilled water without any ions, and these two now contain calcium magnesium ions. So that is my chelator, and I am going to add the chelator to the water. And you see immediately that the color changes. This means that the chelator binds or as I showed you in the presentation hovers over the calcium and magnesium ions and binds them here I need more because it's it was a lot of magnesium yeah it is turning to blue yeah finally it is blue so the chelator here hovers over the metal ions and binds them in a water-soluble complex. You don't see any sedimentation, any separation, because the complex that is built is water-soluble and it is inert. It doesn't react with other ingredients in your formulations and it doesn't meddle with the other ingredients with your formulation. This is exactly what the chelator does in your formulations 
Here you just see it in action uh, with the help of the indicator. Usually in your formulations, you don't see such an obvious action. I hope it is now clear for you how it works. Let me know which one of the chelators you are using in the comments. And if you have any other questions, just let me know. Thank you.